Hey guys, Tarek Maryface here and welcome to another Maryface Aviation video. Today I want to talk to you about preparing for the commercial and instrument training. Now of course this is based on my personal experience, disclaimer here, so uh, yours might be a little different and uh, you should do your own research ahead of time of course. I'm just a dude on the internet telling you what to do. However, hopefully what I tell you today will help you massively in preparing for your future flight training. So the first step for you to do is to make sure that you can actually take a CPL MEIR course. This of course assuming that you're doing the CPL and the IR in a single course with a multi-engine. So if you're doing half the time in the simulator, you will need the following requirements. First off, you'll need 157 hours of total time. It's very specific, but there's a reason for it. You will need 100 hours of pilot and command time. You'll need your night rating, and you'll also need 30 hours of cross-country flying time. This all has to be done before the end of before the beginning of the skill test. So you will not be able to pass your skill tests without those requirements. Before the course even begins, you will need the class one medical, and of course, you will also need the ATPL or CPL theory exam completed and passed. Right next, you're going to talk about the course itself. Make sure you're booked on the course or that you're thinking about booking it, do it. Go ahead and send them an email. Find out what aircraft they use. Hopefully you already know if you've chosen a flight school. If you don't know, go ahead and look it up. Send an email to the flight school and ask them for any resources you can get from them. So that would be the aircraft flight manual for the aircraft you'll be flying and also the standard operating procedures of the, air, of the flight school and if possible, ask them for a copy, any copy, old or new, of the approach plates for the airfield you'll be training in. So now you're going to need a few study materials, some of which you may hopefully have already acquired in the first steps, being the aircraft flight manual and being the uh, flight school's SOPs. You will need some other stuff, however, if you're doing a course on very special avionics such as the G500 or the G1000, make sure you get study materials for those. You can get a bunch of free downloadable PDFs online, there are a bunch of videos on YouTube, there are also a bunch of uh, videos you can buy from for example Sporty's Pilot, they are excellent videos. And you also can get software, so there's some professional software made by Garmin themselves and other avionic creators. And there's also Flight Simulator, which, okay, you have to be careful because it's not fully simulated, but it can help you get a grasp of the logic behind this, the avionic system, and it can also help you get used to the layout of the system and not just the avionics itself but the aircraft you'll be flying in. One last thing that could be very useful, something I didn't do and wish I had, get yourself a cockpit poster for the aircraft you'll be flying in. It's a little bit expensive but it's definitely worth it. You can use it to practice all the checklists that you'll be doing. Alright so now you've got the course booked, you've got the minimum hours and you've got all the study material. So now it's time to hit the books. First off, let's start with the boring bit to get it out of the way. That AFM, this thing right here, it's super boring. And by the way, this is the abbreviated version. Reading through the AFM coverage cover will help you massively in understanding the aircraft you'll be flying in the flight school. Sure, you might find an AFM online, which is actually slightly different from the aircraft you'll be flying in the real school. However, reading about the electric system, the engine systems, the fuel systems, all this will help you massively understanding how the aircraft works and will help you understand the checklists that are given to you either by, by the AFM or in the standard operation procedures of the flight school. Make a record of all the V speeds. So that's really important. When you're going through the AFM, check all the V speeds you can find, especially the minimum control air, uh, speeds in the air, the best climb speed, the best angle of climb speed, the best rate of climb speed for single engine, etc 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 i personally made myself a little table which i find very useful and very important don't forget to memorize the emergency checklists you don't need to memorize all of them but memorize the big ones fire and failure so any fire in the cockpit or in the engines obviously and any engine failures the engine failure a checklist you must memorize it and know it super well and this is where your cockpit poster will come in useful because you should practice it and know it from memory without looking at the checklist for the single engine failure one because you don't have time to look at that while you're flying. Once you're done with the AFM you can move on to the slightly less boring but still boring bit which is to study the standard operational procedures of the flight school. 
in particular, look at the weather limitations, look at any sort of limitations they put for the aircraft, such as maximum taxiing speeds on the runways and taxiways, or the maximum crosswind components, minimum ceilings, minimum RVRs, all this stuff you must know. In the SOPs, you should normally also find the briefings, the passenger briefing if you're doing the commercial, the approach and departure briefings for the instrument flights. Learn those really, really, really well. It's very important that you learn those. It'll make your life a lot easier when you hear the flight school, when you already know the briefs. You don't have to concentrate on trying to remember items because you already know them. Also, don't forget to study the avionics. You've got all those study materials for it. Use it. Read the books and if you've got the software, whether it be a flight simulator or the official software or both even better, go ahead and practice things. Practice turning it on, practice changing frequencies, practice any sort of features it has, using all of those features. And then practice using it for instrument approaches, for example, setting up a flight plan on the MFD. And now you move on to the fun stuff, which is to practice with a cockpit poster. Stick it on a wall and go through the checklist. If you have the school's checklist, if you manage to get a hold of it when you send an email to the head of training for all those good material uh, things you can study, then use that. If you don't, use the AFM. It's got all the official checklists and it's really important to use them. Your school might change the checklist slightly. They might turn some of the checklists into flows, uh, but that's okay because if they change something, you'll understand why because you read the AFM. So obviously you know how the engine systems work and you know how the elect electric systems work. So instead of having to relearn an entire checklist, you're just learning a different way of doing things. You're not erasing something you learned in the past, you're just changing the way you do it, which is much more important and much more efficient. Bonus tip if you're flying on Flight Simulator and you've got a study level sim, that's perfect. If you don't, you just have one of those fun ones, uh, then go ahead through the procedures in the Flight Sim. It's quite a lot of fun anyways, and it'll help you whether you want it or not. It's going to be fun uh, to do it. And going through the checklist, seeing the aircraft um, react to anything you do is also a lot more interesting and a lot more fun way to learn how to use a checklist and to learn anything that might be useful during a flow that the school created. Well that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and more importantly, I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post, uh, post them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer comments, sometimes I take a while, but sorry if I do, I always do my best to answer all the comments. And just like and share and subscribe, that's really what helps me. Uh, if you can share this stuff, it would be great. If you have anything critical to say, please say so in the comments section below. Be gentle about it, I am still progressing, even three years later. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I'm Tarek Marinface, I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.